Well, everybody, we've made it to downtown Seattle. We're at the bike. Pike Place Market. It's one of the top attractions of Seattle. Anytime you're watching TV and they talk about Seattle and they talk about this market. It's my mom up there in front of me with the umbrella. The Korean lady. And everybody knows Sir Ethan. Hey Ethan! Say hi, baby. Mm -hmm. It's the first Starbucks. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. It's like a farmer's market every day of the week. So, sorry everybody, I haven't been posting any videos or anything, I've been dealing with a lot with my family, um, we'll get into that at a later time, but um, today we're out to have fun and enjoy ourselves. So you're going to see a little bit of my hometown. I, I am born in Tacoma, raised in Tacoma, Washington, but everybody knows Seattle, so we'll show you Seattle today. What do you see? Huh? Does Asia really look like that? A lot of places, yeah. Uh oh. You trying to get someone's attention? Say hey, baby. You say hi to everybody. Ethan is a year old now. He's all grown up. He's trying to talk, but he acts shy sometimes. She can't see it. It's a Chinyi. And that's why she signed behind me on the back. Oh, okay. Chini? Chini? Amity. Chini. Chini. No, I'm just looking. Looking at the different designs. Huh? Yeah, they're all earrings and bracelets. These are the cutest shirts. Let's see if I can cut across here. 
They are. They're what are they? Bison? Are they made out of bison? Some are bison, some aren't. Oh, I say. See? Some of them say it. They're really nice. It's cute. It's like a wallet. It's a purse. It's like a little, like a satchel. It's a little purse. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Once we get to the other end of the market where they have all the little show with the fish and everything, we'll get back online and show you what's going on. But oh, those look really comfortable. Oh, it looks really comfortable. Those look really, really warm. So we'll get back online and show you what's going on. Oh, look at all the baby clothes. All right, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Hi. Great, how are you? The other side of the market and we have hot food fresh fresh seafood did you want to get you some corn dogs did you want to get you something uh, you want to choose something until we go go down the here yeah that's fine okay what you want yeah that's fine And a drumstick. I want a drumstick. So my mom says she comes here. Every time she comes to the marketplace, she has to stop at this little fried food stand. Excuse us. I got chicken get No, I'm okay. I get, yeah, we can get the gizzards instead of the shrimp. You want to get gizzards instead of shrimp? It's a barbecue place here. Yeah. They have fresh cut flowers. Look at this roasted brisket and pork butt. Looks really good. Got the turkey leg, got ribs. We 
got their kitchen back here working it out. Ooh, what's that? Beef brisket. Oh. oh, they got a bakery? Yeah, they very good. I think we made it where I wanted to see. Oh, there's your monkfish. Outside of the marketplace. She goes, We have about one gift, it's been all food. Oh, the baby, the baby, the baby. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Alright, out of ten dollars. <laughs> I think she found the biggest one. <laughs> you too, thank you. I'm surprised he didn't reach out. <laughs> I can. I got it. It's stuck on my arm. Go ahead. Thank you. Well, the little doggy's trying to get the big doggy back there. Everybody's in line for this, this bakery. Oh, they come to get the bread. They look delicious. Mm hmm. Very fresh bread. So much to see. One what? No. I don't know what it is. It's just a bunch of so much. So they're buying the seafood and they're cooking the seafood. 
It doesn't get any fresher than that. And the water is on the other side of the market. Huh? No, I'm okay. That's the same thing. It's a thing that you were talking about. Yeah. They say crab pot. No, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have a whole menu on the. Oh, menu too. But it's okay. Let's go. <laughs> Everything's so so different. It's like the world's biggest farmers market. All right, well, that's gonna conclude our day. We're gonna go ahead and go on and finish what we got going on for today, and we'll talk to you as soon as we get back to Orlando. We get back to Orlando on Saturday, so we'll talk to you then. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll keep you posted on our latest adventures. Ethan! Ethan! Pet baby! Say bye! <laughs> He's looking at this sign. He thinks it's an animal. <laughs> Okay, so I thought we were finished for the day. But this is like the highlight of my day. They are making cheese. As everyone stands here and watch. That looks like it's hard work to stir that all day. I can only imagine. Then they have it over here. See, can you see it? That's the cheese. Can you see it back there in the corner? The cheese? All right. Now we'll say like, comment, and subscribe if you like. We'll end it for real this time. We are coming up on Starbucks, first Starbucks, but I think we'll just ignore that. We'll just snap a picture and post it on Instagram or Facebook. And once we get that started, we'll let you know what page that's going to be. But I think it's going to be E and E, E J E. I think that's what our page is going to be. We'll see. Everyone have a great day. All right, everybody, it's me again. And me and Sir Ethan. Ethan, say hey. We are on a Pacific Northwest tour. We're taking a tour of the harbor. It's a grassy tour. Cruises, a grassy cruises. It's a tour boat. It's a one hour tour of the Pacific Northwest. So we're just now leaving the port. We're going to enjoy our cruise. We're going to see how this takes us. And we'll get back to you. Look on top of the globe off the right side of the boat, and you can see another sculpture of the boat. If you remember what it says around the globe, it says it's in the P.I. Archibald. P.I. stands for Post Intelligencer.
That's the first intelligence one. That is the oldest newspaper here in Seattle. Do you guys remember the story about the boat that pulled in with gold on board? There was a newspaper article and then people painted it and Seattle was put on the map for like That newspaper was one of the papers that published the story about the tuck rats. That paper is more than 100 years old and has seen Seattle from its birth. Uh, so it's down here in the middle of You're still looking for Logan's eyes, but you can get it on the line. And now, if you're saying to yourself, well, Archie, you're really building up for this bald eagle, uh, I am not going to be satisfied for anything less than a real live bald eagle. What possibly can many BC lines that is about? 700 to 1,200. That was 20% of my In fact, the ones that you see right there, even though they are small, they are right. Those guys right here are four times as large as I am. California sleeve island. Well, what a treat. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Captain Karen a round of applause. That was great sighting. That was fantastic. Hashtag best tour ever. I don't have to. The sea lions are a very close relative to my favorite predator in these waters. Uh, I'm going to have to talk about them really quickly because we got to take a little break in just a second. Uh, my favorite predator in the Pacific Northwest uh, waters would be the sea otters. Where are my sea otter fans? Make some noise, second deck sea otter fans. We might not have any doubt. All right, for everyone that did not make any noise, you guys are going to be sea otter fans when you find out that it has been scientifically proven that sea otters are the cutest animals on the planet. Scientifically proven. I say this because there's another one over there on that bar to sleep. When they sleep, that is scientifically referred to as rafting. That is, when they sleep, they will hold the hand of their significant other so that they do not Yeah. <laughs> it's utterly adorable! Sea otters also, believe it or not, keep pets, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, sea otters will keep pet rocks that they keep tucked underneath, tucked underneath one arm, kind of in their armpit area. And they keep these pet rocks, a favorite stone that they have found, for breaking open self shellfish and urchins on the bottom of the water, which they feed on. And, speaking of feeding, ladies and gentlemen, Sea otters can eat up to 25% of their body weight every single day. That, uh, thank you. I was looking for someone to say wow. Guys, okay, let me put that in perspective for anyone who's not impressed. That would be the same thing as me, Arjun, deciding to eat a 16-ounce steak for breakfast. Casual breakfast choice. And then doing that 43 more times throughout the course of the day. Guys, that's one steak every 25 minutes. That is what the sea otters are doing. They are they are really impressive. There's no creature like them uh, on this planet or anywhere else in outer space. And now that I have stirred your appetites, and then we have the I'm going to meet Stadium you guys for our intermission. It's a brief one to two minute break so that you guys get a rest from my voice. So uh, this is the end of episode one of uh, Harbor Tours. Stay tuned for episode the land of Harbor Island, which when it was built, was the largest Harbor man -made Island is a man-made island. Uh, since then, the other man -made islands island. have since taken over that title. One of them, in Dubai, has taken that title. Uh, so, uh, we can no longer say it is the largest, but it is nonetheless one of the largest. And, uh, one of the owners, the largest owners of land of the island, would be the port of Seattle, uh, which is responsible for all these shipping containers and any of these compost that you see. No port is complete without a fleet of compost. Off the right side, we have the Crowley fleet of compost, and speaking of the Crowley fleet of compost, we're going to do a little shout out to, uh, where, where are my folks from Alaska? Alaska, where are you at? I'm here! I'm here! <laughs> Alaska folks, we have the Nanook, uh, and also, uh, which, which, um, the Nanook, which was stationed in Valdez, Alaska for decades, uh, and that is, this down here, actually, a very rare, uh, trip to Seattle, so, ladies and gentlemen, that is a very good that protects, uh, the port of Alaska. Where's the two-way speaker? Now, you can tell that these are tough ones, because not only do they have higher dollars, that's a good way Also, more commonly, is the large pilot house on top, or the wheelhouse of the house. 
and he has a lot of windows and no one smokes that not because tugboats are essentially just gigantic engines. That's all that they are. You'll see that there's no space on them. They're only good for pushing and pulling other things. Not even direct contact to the long black boats, which you will have no time for. Very few smokes that's enough because they have no need of propulsion. But they've got a lot of space on top of them in the sun. And so you can guess it. Tugboats and barges go together like peanut butter and chocolate, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the best and oldest marriages on the waterfront. You will see tugboats carrying barges uh, all over the place. From one port to another port, some of these tugs will go up to Alaska with barges filled with gravel, train cars sometimes. Uh, and then also you'll see tugboats carrying barges around an, uh, an individual port. And many of the barges that they carry around will have nothing on them. Which is what they have. But the reason for that is that all of the precious cargo is put inside the barge. And even if they have all the points, you can find it in your barge. You will also see tugboats maneuvering enormous container ships into narrow waterways, such as the Eastern Duarte Waterway that we are going down right now. And that's because the container ships, which we are going to be seeing in just a moment, are some of the largest vessels in the world ever built. And they're very good at capturing large amounts of goods that very fast have maneuvering the Eastern Ocean. And all two to four hundred feet is operated by a single person. That person is called the longshore man, he or she sits in a glass box right in the belly of the dinosaur. And he or she has one job. That is to unload these container ships as fast as they possibly can. They're very good at what they do, and they can unload one container in roughly 60 to 90 seconds. The reason that, that, that this is so important is because time is money for these ships. These container ships, which you will see, in fact, the one that is loaded up with containers at the very front of the boat, 1,202 feet in length. Uh, I'll point it out again as we get closer. That means if you were to stand it up in the middle of the downtown, it is our above the tallest skyscrapers. For these 1,000 foot vessels to be here in front of you, it is costing the company $40,000 a day. You thought you had to pay for that. Oh no, my goodness. $40,000 a day for this boat to be here, and so it is absolutely paramount that the longshoremen get the containers on and off as fast as they can. This is also their, their, they're very good at what they do, and they can unload one of these ships in roughly 72 hours, just three days. And that is uh, aided by the fact that the containers themselves have been standardized into only three lengths, 20 feet, 40 feet, and 45 feet, so that they can be picked up off of the boat and then loaded onto a truck or a train. You will actually see along the, the bottom of the docks where you might see trucks zooming away with containers on top. And many of you have probably seen trains loaded with these containers traveling across the country. In season four, the boat to come here three to forty thousand dollars a day, have their stuff unloaded onto trains and ship across the country, then to go to the other side of the country, which would cost them seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars because they're only one way through. Now, these containers, uh, for intermodal shipping containers, because they can go on different modes of transportation, they have increased efficiency, but they are also their own worst enemy. Because they are so good at what they do, they will spend a lot of time empty. It costs just as much to ship an empty container as a full container, and so nobody wants to ship an empty container. This boat here, uh, off the right side of the boat, this one is 1,202 feet long. One of the largest ones that we will see here in the city. As I was saying, the containers, uh, it costs just as much to ship an empty as a full container. No one wants to, to ship an empty container. And as a result, you can see the little box, the so box the at the top. Are in fact empty. A container will spend roughly half in the 15 year life. Sitting alone and empty.
Hey everybody. Um, well, it's finally the end of a long day. Um, yeah, I said a whole bunch of times today, okay, that was going to be the end of it, but I didn't know today was going to be such a long day and we we're going to be doing so much. But however, we had a blast. Mom's tired. Ethan's still awake. Say hey. His brother's home now. So now he's even more awake because he has to stay up and act like he's playing the game with his brother because his brother's streaming on video games and stuff. So twitch.tv slash Luluze L I L U Z for while you already know. Go tap in, go tap in with the game. <laughs> so yeah, check him out the way he does his little live video streams and stuff on his game. Him and Ethan always go together and have a blast. You see Ethan with his little gaming controller. That's Isaiah's controller. Ethan has hey. his controller too. Hey. He's saying hey. hey. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody have a good night. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell somebody. Tell a friend. Tell them to check us out and see what we got going on. We're always into new and fun things. Um, we'll be back in Orlando on Saturday. We'll do some catching up, and then we'll go from there. We'll tell you what our next adventure is going to be. Everyone have a great evening. Bye. Oh, my eyes are trash. Oh, well. Bye. Good night.